ban the building. Lock out arsonists from education system. We are shifting from distributing physical food to cash transfers, which is more efficient. Change of tact. State to give families cash for purchase of relief food. Teenage mothers, Nairobi County leads the pack. And relief for borrowers, no more listing for those owing under 5 million shillings. Welcome to Self-Care Tips. In our last episode, we covered eye makeup precisely and we got this stunning and gorgeous look. Today we're going to cover the full face makeup. We're going to talk about how to apply foundation. We're going to cover lipstick and so many things to give you a full gorgeous face. Application of foundation, a primer is used which forms a base to hold the makeup well. It seals the skin imperfections like pores, open pores, and other bumps on the skin. Its purpose is to give the makeup a very smooth base to hold on to. And it also makes your makeup last and last all day long. When choosing foundation colors, always consider your undertone. For example, Purity, our model here, has what we call a warm undertone or yellow-based undertone. So when you're looking for your foundation, consider your undertone. And that is why we have makeup artists like Maria who assist in getting your perfect match of the skin. Nothing looks worse than using the wrong shade of foundation because it gives you a demarcation line, that line around your neck which really, really does not look flattering at all. But with expert guidance, you're able to select your right color. The best thing to use is this um, tabbing brush. As you can see, she's dabbing the foundation onto the skin and it works ideally because it's able to cover well. Use this brush in these dabbing motions so that your foundation sits well and is able to give the perfect coverage. The next step is the use of powder. Powder is used to set the skin, to set the foundation on the skin, to prevent shine, and it's the finishing touch. It gives the skin a very velvety, matte appearance, very smooth, and can be used on oily skin, or if you're going to be behind the camera, you can always use powder to give that impartation of velvety, a little bit of powder is used under the eyes to set the under eye concealer before the final touch which will be the lipstick a light touch a gentle touch is applied nude is brown combined with a slightly brownish pink which gives the perfect pout or a perfect shade of lipstick which is ideal for a working day or for going out. The makeover would not be complete without a burst of setting spray or fix, makeup fix. This is a fixative which will keep your makeup lasting all day. This has been self-care tips. I am Irene Jaroge.
ni fanya nini huyu chizi huku? Chizi mwingine na atoa kwenu. Tushinane. Nilikuwa naangalia nini mbona akakusikitika hivi? Ah niko sawa. Niko sawa tu kuna shida. Najua ulijaribu sana kunikanya lakini sikukusikiza. Najuta. Kama kawaida leo umechelewa. Eh na kuna umechangamka sana. Hata juma la mwisho ndipo umechangamka hivi nilini. Yaani kwa hivyo wataka sote tushikwe tufungiwe mo ndani alafu atakayekusaidia nani? Do you have a news story to share with KBC? Get in touch swiftly on email newsroom at kbc.co.ke call 0723-892-654 or 0734-780-124. Well, good evening from wherever you are watching us. Breaking news, there's a fire outbreak in Mathare. We understand a number of houses have been consumed. Uh, police have moved in. Details are still scanty, but we will make them available as we get them. Good evening, this is KBC Prime Edition. We bring you the Eye on the News this Monday, the 8th of November, 2021. Good evening, my name is Tom Boyer. My name is Purity Museo. We are coming to you live from the broadcasting house here in Nairobi. Later on, we will have Cynthia Nyamai with the day's business news and current Kibet with the sport. But first things first, our headline stories. So anybody who is planning to burn the building, just remember that if you are caught, you are not going to go to any other school. Taking a tough stand. Government to lock out arsonists from education system. We are shifting from distributing physical food to cash transfers, which is more efficient. Change of tact. State to give families cash for purchase of relief food. Teenage mothers, Nairobi County leads the pack. And relief for borrowers, no more listing for those owing under 5 million shillings. Well, thank you for joining us. Our sign language interpreter, Susan Thuku. You can join us on this live broadcast on our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1, hashtag Prime Edition, and at Tomboya24 on Twitter. Let's start off this bulletin with our lead story. Education Cabinet Secretary George Magoha says students found guilty of arson will be locked out of the education system. Professor Magoa says that no institution will admit learners linked to nationwide school fires. The warning came as over 35 students were arrested in connection with cases of unrest in various schools. Zainab Said opens our coverage with that report. Education Cabinet Secretary Professor George Magoha is now talking tough as cases of school unrest sweep through the country. With more than 20 public schools already closed, Education CS has made it clear that those found guilty will have to say goodbye to their education. Same story that oh, when students are in the, in, in the prayer room, then the dormitory caught fire. You think we have no brains? So I hope we... we People don't come and start saying, oh, let's treat this with decorum. When they are burning 
other children's properties in the dormitory. Are they thinking of decorum? Speaking in Machako school, Magoha dismissed claims that the frequent burning of schools is attributed to COVID-19 stress, instead throwing blame to parents for abdicating their responsibilities. There are CCTV cameras everywhere. There's a command and control center, manned 24 hours. Even when a student is going to the toilet, you can see. So what is all this nonsense? that all students were in a prep room and fire started in the boarding house. It is stupid, it is primitive, and it must stop. But as Professor Magoha was reading the riot act, 11 students were arraigned before Nyeri court for attempting to torch Kagumo and Kiandu schools, respectively. In Siaya, Maranda Secondary School was closed indefinitely and six students arrested following a fire incident that raised down two dormitories. Teachers now demanding that Kenning be returned in schools to instill discipline on the rogue students. I want to use this platform first to appeal to all students of this nation that there is no amount of stress that can make you destroy millions of properties that have been put in our institutions. Any kind of stress can be sorted out by proper discussion with the administration. For Prime Edition, I'm Zainab Said. And there's fire outbreak in Mathare Area 10. Firefighters are trying to put out the fire whose cause still remain unknown. Now to drought situation in the country. The government needs 7.3 billion shillings to support 2.5 million Kenyans affected by drought. Public service agenda, senior citizen affairs and special programs. Cabinet Secretary Professor Margaret Cobia says the affected population is in 23 counties and will remain food insecure for the remaining part of the year. The government will start making cash transfers for purchase of food to families facing the wrath of drought. Kamche Menza has the details. From December this year, 2.5 million people in 23 arid and semi-arid counties affected by drought are expected to start receiving a stipend from the government. It is 2,000 per, per person or 3,000 per household. The money is supposed to be given per month and where it is not done per month, at least two months. Therefore, moving forward in the month of December, we will not be dealing with physical food. Public Service, Gender, Senior Citizen Affairs and Special Programs Cabinet Secretary Professor Margaret Kobia acknowledged gaps in the distribution of relief food, hence the need for change of tact. To adequately address the impending crisis, the government has identified priority needs in the key sectors amounting to Kenya shillings 7.3 billion. Will, this will cover cost of delivery of food safety needs, livestock, health and nutrition, agriculture, education and water for the period ending December 2021. Much more accountable, much more transparent, much quicker in our response and much cheaper. It's much cheaper to do cash transfer. Development partners have pledged to support efforts to mobilize resources in resilience building for affected regions. In September, I helped to launch uh, an emergency drought appeal for almost $140 million. I'm very happy to tell you that during the meeting today, the United States government confirmed an additional allocation of $34 million, US dollars, which means that we're almost at 50% of what we need. Currently, eight counties, Marsabit, Mandera, Tanariva, Lamu, Garissa, Wajia, Isiolo, and Turkana are said to be in the alarm drought phase, with 12 other counties facing a similar fate amid low rainfall. Meanwhile, the government will continue streamlining disbursements under social protection interventions, targeting 369,000 vulnerable households and 734,119 individuals. Kamche Menza for Prime Edition. Well, from that story on drought, let's now move, take a look at an item that breaks the silence on 
teenage pregnancy. Nairobi County recorded the highest number of adolescent pregnancies in the year 2021. According to the latest report released Monday by the National AIDS Control Council, 2,379 girls in the city aged between 10 and 14 years got pregnant over the last 10 months. Stakeholders are now calling for multi-sectoral interventions to reverse this worrying trend. Sexual violence, forced marriage, difficulties in accessing services and poverty are fueling high rates of unintended pregnancies and HIV in most parts of the country. This is according to the report released by the National AIDS Control Council and the National Council for Population and Development. Nairobi County accounting for the highest number of adolescent pregnancies reported this year. The city having registered a total of 2,379 pregnancies of girls aged between 10 and 14 years in the last 10 months. The other counties in the top five list are Homer Bay with 1530 cases, Kajiado with 1,496, Mandera with 1,370 and Bomet with 1,041. National Council for Population and Development Director General Mohamed Abdi Kadir noted that 59.3% of all sexually active teenagers do not use any form of contraceptive. Among the old and married sexually active adolescents, we are saying 593 are not using any method of contraception. Among these age groups, 59.3% are not using any methods of contraception. Very high figure. Is it issues to do with access? Is it issues to do with, 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 the, with, the, with knowledge? It's also something we need to find out. The National AIDS Control Council CEO Ruth Masha called for concerted efforts from all stakeholders to address the worrying trend. Kenya has a very large burden of HIV. We spend around 25.4 billion Kenya shillings on commodities alone. This is basically a commodity being bought and being used in that year. Nairobi County, Kisumu, Omabe, Siaya, Migori are some of the counties that have very high um, budgets within the national government that we have to give those commodities to. So therefore, if you're spending 25.4 billion just only on commodity, it tells you that it is impossible to sustain the response unless we stop new HIV infections. We need to address teenage pregnancy based on the drivers. So in some places it's because of poverty, we need to address poverty. In some places it's because of, of, of GPV, we need to address GPV. In some places it is because of cultural issues, like if you go to Narok, if you go to Mandera, Wajia, it is cultural issues. Moving on, the Supreme Court will hold a physical session to issue directions on the Building Bridges Initiative appeals on Tuesday, November 9th. Attorney General Kihara Kariuki moved to the Supreme Court in September to challenge the decision by the appellate court to affirm the nullification of BBI. Through Solicitor General Kennedy Ogeto, the Attorney General Kihara Karaoke said they were challenging the finding by the majority of the seven judge bench, which held that the basic structure doctrine is applicable in Kenya. In addition, the AG is challenging the ruling that civil proceedings can be instituted against the President during the tenure of office in respect of anything done or not done, contrary to the Constitution. The Independent Electoral Boundaries Commission separately filed an appeal against the ruling particularly on the constitutional composition, quorum and mandate of the electoral body. On August 20th this year, the Court of Appeal upheld the High Court ruling that nullified the BBI. In a majority decision, six of the seven judge bent tore into the BBI process, declaring several stages in action unconstitutional and unlawful. Timothy Kipnosu for Prime Edition. Let's now move into the corridors of justice and the Supreme Court has thrown out an application by former Nairobi Governor Mike Mbuvi Sonko challenging the swearing-in of Ann Kananu as Nairobi Governor. The court ruled that it has no jurisdiction to hear the application. Sonko had moved to the apex court on the 25th of October seeking to stop the swearing-in of Kananu after the Court of Appeal struck out his case. 
The Apex Court has cleared the way for the swearing-in of Nairobi Deputy Governor Anne Kananu as the city county boss. This is after a five-judge bench declined to issue orders stopping Kananu from assuming office of the governor claiming Mike Sonko's application was premature. They noted that in the absence of judgment of the Court of Appeal, the application did not meet the threshold as per the Constitution. The main appeal filed before the Court of Appeal by Sonko is yet to be heard and determined with directions on the hearing of the appeal set for November the 15th. In October, the appellate court dismissed Sonko's appeal of the High Court decision to remove him from office, forcing him to move to the Supreme Court. For Prime Edition, I'm Ben Troy Njur. A lawyer reported abducted over 12 days ago has been found alive. Professor Hassan Nadwa was found in Mwingi, but his client El Giva Buire is still missing. Following development, the Law Society of Kenya has announced countywide demonstrations to compel authorities to take stern action behind or against those behind the abductions. A lawyer who had gone missing after an apparent abduction has been found in Mwingi safe and sound. Professor Hassan Nado was found alive in Mwingi on Monday at 1 a.m. and later reunited with his family. We are hoping that Safaricom Limited will comply and supply us with the data which we will be able to analyze to just determine what happened, how Professor was abducted. This is after he disappeared for more than a week from what his peers claimed was abduction. We want to call this country that we have a constitution. None of us at the leadership level, at the community level, in all levels in this country will want to see us a Kenya with, with their face with threats of, of terrorism. We all want a peaceful country. Nadua was allegedly dumped about 200 kilometers away from Nairobi. Speaking in Nairobi, civil society activists have condemned the act, terming it a gross violation of human rights. There are people who have disappeared, and you are witnesses to 18 bodies who have been collected from the Tana River at, at, at the bridge at Garissa. A lot of those are Kenyans. There is torture signs on each one of them. Who did this, we don't know. Led by LSK Chief Executive Officer Masi Wambua, the lawyers have accused authorities for not taking the issues of alleged forced disappearance with seriousness. As a law society of Kenya, we do condemn in the strongest terms possible the abduction, mysterious disappearances, not only of our members, but also of Kenyans. If you are in law enforcement, law comes before enforcement. If you are in national security, national comes before security. The organizations drawn from Kenya Human Rights Commission, Amnesty International, Supkem, Kituo Chashiria and Law Society of Kenya question the manner security is provided to its citizens. The acts of forced disappearance, abduction, kidnapping in Kenya, the latest involving Professor Hassan Nadwa and his client Elgiva Abuire has ignited wrath from members of the Civil Society of Kenya, Law Society of Kenya included, even as they call on the government to ensure that the rights of every Kenyan is not violated, infringed or threatened. Timothy Kipnoso for Prime Edition, Nairobi. Let's now get an update on the COVID situation. 20 people have tested positive for the COVID-19 from a sample size of 3,136 screened in the last 24 hours. The positivity rate is now at 0.6%. Total confirmed positive cases are now 253,853 and cumulative tests so far conducted are 2.7 million. 70 patients have recovered in the last one day, bringing total recoveries to 247,370. A total of 402 patients are currently admitted to various health facilities across the country. Fatalities remain at 5,312 as no new death, no new death has been reported. According to the Ministry of Health, a total of 5.6 million vaccines have been administered across the country. Globally, data from John Hopkins University shows that more than 250 million people have been infected and over 5 million people have died, sadly, so far. Now, let's go to the counties. And Kakamega County Government has handed over 14 acres of land to the Ministry of Petroleum 
and mining for the establishment of a gold refinery. Meanwhile, a 63-year-old bishop from Igembe North in Meru County has embarked on a 300-kilometer walk to the capital city, Nairobi, to deliver a message to the deputy president. More of these and other stories in our county news roundup. Kakamega County Governor Wycliffe Oparanya said that the gold refinery will efficiently facilitate and ensure economic exploitation of the mineral within the western region. High value gold deposits have been identified in Ushuru, Bushangala and Rostaman areas. The project is hii mradi ukianza utapatilisha maisha ya watu wengi kabisa katika Kakamega County. Elsewhere Kenya National Farmers Federation has had the Ministry of Agriculture to release funds meant to boost agriculture in the country. Lazima wakulima waendelee kulima, lazima kuwe na 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 na, na mipangilio ambayo kampeni zisije zikaingia zikaribu uchumi. Yes. Still in Kiambu County, farmers in Limuru have been asked to embrace and practice organic farming, which is medicinal and could help in management of lifestyle diseases locally and globally. This follows concerns over the increased use of chemical fertilizers, which in turn lead to climate change. Agriculture is the backbone of this nation and uh, we, we really would like the government to put more emphasis on, uh, on giving more money into, uh, into farming so that people can get enough food. And the Kenya National Qualification Authority has rolled out a policy framework for recognition of informal sector skills by institutions of higher learning and employers in the public and private sectors. The initiative will see use in the agriculture sector, awarded certificates based on skills they have acquired at work and without having to seek formal education. It's going to be a game changer in the national food security systems in the sense that uh, we are going to recognize the, the skill manpower that we now have. Because previously uh, there were challenges in the sense that uh, how do we know this person is competent, the issue of competence. Finally, Bishop Peter Machuka of the Harvest Christian Church from Igembe North in Meru County has embarked on a 300 kilometers walk to Nairobi to deliver a special message to the Deputy President William Ruto. The 63-year-old says he's under firm instructions from God. But, kwa sababu mungu aliniambia, ili, 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 se, ili niliamua, mpaka nifanya hivo, ili nisiye ni kamuasi mungu. For Prime Edition, I'm Ruth Wambol. Very well, that story brings us to our first break. This is KBC Prime Edition. Engage us on our social media platforms at KBC Channel 1 News at Purity and as Commissaire at Tom Boyer 24. Stay with us. Business News is coming up next. To get Jeremiah 2911 as your skizzer tune, dial star 811 star 397 hash. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. To get Jeremiah 2911 as your skis are tuned, dial star 811 star 397 hash. Star 811 star 397 hash. Log on to the KBC website at www.kbc.co.ke to get the latest breaking news, entertainment, sports, politics, 
lifestyle or business trends from Kenya and around the world. Never miss new episodes from your favorite TV shows, reruns and movies. Just stream online or watch live on your YouTube channel at KBC Channel 1 TV shows for the day's biggest stories. Trust with the news and family entertainment. Log on to KBC Channel 1. Watch what you want anytime, anywhere. Welcome, I am Cynthia Nyamai. Now, you are unlikely to get a loan from a bank in coming days following a directive by the central bank to commercial banks to stop blacklisting borrowers who fail to repay loans of up to 5 million shillings. In a statement, the central bank projects that the directive could adversely impact provision of credit as banks will be unable to distinguish between the good and bad borrowers, hence leading to rationing of credit. Regina Manyara reports. Monday's announcement by the Central Bank of Kenya is in line with a directive by President Uhuru Kenyatta during the Mashuja Day celebrations last month. That the relevant authorities will, for loans less than 5 million, effect a moratorium of listings in CRBs for a period of 12 months to the end of September 2022. And on Monday, the Central Bank of Kenya said it had directed banks to stop blacklisting defaulters who owe banks less than 5 million shillings. In light of the exceptional circumstances from the coronavirus pandemic, and in particular, aiming to shield micro, small and medium enterprises from ad the adverse effect, the suspension is therefore targeted to rope in MSMEs for a specified duration that will provide space to turn around their businesses. As such, effective first last month, credit reference bureaus will not include any credit report and negative credit information for loans of a customer who has defaulted on a loan of up to 5 million shillings. The central bank adds the relevant authorities will for loans less than 5 million shillings effect a moratorium of listing in CRBs for a period of 12 months to end in September 2022. The central bank projects that borrowers are likely to face challenges accessing loans following today's announcement. The CBK says the suspension could adversely impact the provision of credit by banks to the target group as they will be unable to distinguish between the good and bad borrowers during the suspension period. This could lead to rationing of credit as was evident during the period of interest rate caps from 2016 to 2019. Regina Manya reporting for Prime Edition. The government has been urged to broaden policies and regulations that will empower small businesses to thrive and recover, especially after the COVID-19 disruptions. Small businesses say they are facing challenges in marketing their Kenyan products and have welcomed the Make It Kenya Extravaganza exhibition to be held in Nairobi later this month, noting that it is an opportunity to showcase their products to a wider market. Here is Alan Oko with more. In a September 2020 survey done by the Kenya Private Sector Alliance, 14.7% of businesses closed their operations when COVID-19 pandemic hit the country. The survey showed that most operational businesses were still struggling to get to pre-COVID levels. With increasing vaccine uptake and an opening economy, stakeholders say there is a need for business continuity with better policies. Uh, we know a lot of things change when uh, legislation is changed. So we are going to have uh, government uh, institutions, members of the diplomatic corps. <coughs> we are going to uh, have discussions around this issue of uh, of of uh, Made in Kenya uh, brand, how can we strengthen it? How can government change laws? 
uh, for us to make sure that our consumption is consumption of locally made material. Despite the reopening of the economy, small businesses continue to face challenges that include limited access to market, slow business and funding challenges, with many running aground before their first birthday. I think now that we have been given the green light, it's now time to relook and re-engineer uh, DNA. And people, uh, rather, there's still a element of consumerism that is out there. It's just how do you repackage yourself, you know, such that you remain relevant for those who survived and those who are actually at the verge of closing. How do you now get a new uh, impetus to get your business up and running? So I think those are concerns you want to start having now moving forward. To mitigate against some of the challenges, the Make It Kenya Extravaganza exhibition to be held in Nairobi next week, alongside other expos, have been identified as avenues for business recovery for small businesses. We will be um, looking at business leaders, especially within the SMBs community, to attend and get the training that they need to be able to grow their businesses. Our partners, the banks that we are working with, uh, partners like uh, Keproba, uh, the county governments are also uh, getting uh, sp uh, spaces you can get uh, to be an exhibitor at Mike uh, through them. It is uh, a small fee for SMEs. Uh, small companies uh, at a cost of 30,000, uh, bigger companies, uh, the, the stands are going to cost them between 100 uh, and 200,000. Uh, we have many uh, small businesses that are going to be sponsored to come and exhibit uh, at the event. Participants called for conducive policies for businesses to thrive. Some private sector players are saying that tapping into TVETs can also include opportunities for the young people going forward, especially after the COVID-19 disruption. Alan Aoko, Prime Edition. Thank you, Alan, for that report. Now, moving on, the number of women engineers remains low in Kenya despite various efforts in place to address the gender gap. Out of the 7,000 registered engineers in Kenya, less than 500 females represent the sector. The Institution of Engineers of Kenya plans to partner with learning institutions to encourage more young women to join the fraternity. Kenya's engineering industry is heavily skewed towards men with all the subsectors being dominated by males. For example, out of 1,188 registered civil engineers, 126 are women despite the immense job opportunities. Kenya has more than 1,000 consulting engineers where only 14 are registered women. Encouraging more and more women to take up any field that they, is, or they have uh, interest, competences and intellectual capacity. And we have seen an increase, an upsurge in the numbers of engineers. And uh, we continue to encourage uh, girls and uh, women that this is a very fulfilling career. It is just like any other. And it's also an economic issue. To address the glaring gaps, the Institution of Engineers Kenya says it has started programs to mentor girls to venture into the industry. Some of the identified barriers to women transitioning to engineering field include cultural issues, lack of mentorship, and low uptake of science, technology, mathematics, and science courses. As a profession, we also face challenges in terms of retention. You find that uh, women opt for Yes, they have done engineering, but as they exit from university, you find that then they opt for softer careers. The Engineers Board of Kenya says it has launched an online portal to encourage more graduate engineers to register since more than 15,000 graduate engineers in Kenya are yet to get certified. To launch the female African Female Engineering Hall of Fame, Kwa hii Hall of Fame, we are awarding wale watu wote kutoka the most senior engineer to even student engineers. Ndiyo waweze kuonyesha kile wameweza kuachieve. Na tukifanya hivo tunamini kwamba tutaweza kuahimiza hawa watoto wadogo waweze kuingia kwenye kiwanja cha uhandisi. More than 2,000 graduate engineers enter the job market every year with most of them exploring job opportunities abroad. For Prime Time Edition from Mombasa County, I'm Michael Mondiga.
Now, Equity Group made 26.9 billion shillings in net profit during the first nine months of this year, representing a 79 year on year increase. The lender attributes the performance to higher interest income of 67 billion shillings and a 68% reduction in provisions for bad loans at 4.6 billion shillings. Unlike the previous year when equity's profits fell 20% and its provisions for bad loans rose 11-fold, the first nine months of 2021 have seen the top-tier lender increase its margin. An 85% growth in profit before tax, a 79% profit growth after tax, a 27% growth in total assets, and a 25% growth in total income. This was powered by higher group total funding that rose by 27%, driven by growth in customer deposits of 27%, up to 875.7 billion shillings. This was supported by the growth in loan book by 23% to 559 billion shillings. The performance is largely attributable to recovering income streams from COVID-19 related disruptions. Equities total operating expenses reduced 3.3% to 43.8 billion shillings due to a reduction in loan loss provisioning by 68% to 4.6 billion shillings from 14.3 billion shillings during a similar period last year. But I think where we expect significant changes in the PNL, uh, in the PNL, we expect uh, non-fathered income to even grow faster because we are focusing on cross-border trade. The ratio of non-performing loans fell to 8.9% from 10.4%. The group accommodated loans worth 171 billion shillings owing to COVID-19 disruptions, of which loans worth 122 billion shillings have resumed repayment, while 4 billion shillings has been downgraded to non-performing loans, with 45 billion shillings constituting 7% of the total outstanding gross loan book of 608 billion shillings. When you take the Kenyan banking industry, as a target was at 13.8, so we have 500 bases lower than the industry in quality of our loan book. Our loan book is 500 bases better than the industry loan book. And that gives us confidence that it's not just good performance, but high quality balance sheet, highly liquid balance sheet, and a significant balance sheet. The bank's total operating income expanded by 25.6% to 80.5 billion shillings on account of 24% growth in interest income, while non-interest funded income grew by 39% to 31.4 billion shillings. From banking industry now to the insurance industry, where the Association of Kenya Insurance has called on underwriters to take advantage of artificial intelligence and digital tools to move from the traditional reactive experience to a predictive and proactive experience. AKI says insurance need to move beyond the automation of routine labor-intensive data gathering and processing tasks to portfolio management and greater interaction with brokers and the larger customers. Insurance consumers are increasingly preferring to self-manage their insurance policies online, but very few insurers have developed digital capabilities to enable this preference. Aki Executive Director Tom Gishui says the association hopes for end-to-end -end digitization in various insurance covers where they will facilitate insurance buying, payment and claiming on the digital domain. Through the claims registration app, Kenyans will be able to access life tax relief. With a certificate, the clients will be able to claim tax relief from employers as per the government directive. 
Non-life insurance gross premium amounted to 132.70 billion Kenyan shillings in 2020, a slight decrease from 133.45 billion Kenyan shillings recorded in 2019. Medical and motor insurance classes maintained a leading position in terms of contribution in non-life insurance business premium at 33.43% and 33.71% respectively. Underwriting results improved from a loss of 3.27 billion Kenyan shillings in 2019 to a loss of 2.33 billion Kenyan shillings in 2020. Medical insurance recorded the highest underwriting profit of 1.7 billion Kenyan shillings, which may be attributed to people staying away from hospitals, resulting in fewer hospital visits due to the fear of COVID-19. Gishuhi attributed the drop to the financial constraints insurance clients had to face during the pandemic, noting that with the ongoing opening of the economy, the rate of insurance cancellation and non-renewals would be reduced. Reporting for Prime Edition, my name is Hibak Said. And now to the corporate briefs where pension fund trustees and administrators have been urged to show greater accountability to members by ensuring they have access to the right information. Zamara Group CEO Sandeep Raichura said inadequate member communication was the greatest failure within the pension schemes. Here are the details of this and more in our corporate briefs. Zamara Group says most pension fund members only receive communication when joining and exiting the pension fund. Group CEO Sandeep Raichura says to effectively address the savings and retirement issues of Kenyans, there is need to focus on the entire financial journey. He also called on the government to reconsider the current tax deductible limit on pension contributions of only 20,000 shillings a month and have it increased. Because if you give somebody a benefit statement that says you've got 1.2 million shillings in your account, that person might think I'm going to do well. But if you then translate that to say this is going to give you a pension of only 4,000 a month, you are likely to get some action from the individual member. We have around four or five tax proposals. And even last year we had around four or five tax proposals, which we submitted to Treasury. We went there and explained to them very well, but they did not take them up. If industry supports us as we are pushing these things, I think we have more chance of, of, of passing. Meanwhile, Bank of Kigali Group PLC has recorded a 33% jump in profit to 4 billion shillings in the first nine months of this year, underlining the Rwandan economy's strong rebound from the COVID-19 pandemic shocks. Bank of Kigali Group, whose shares are cross-listed on the Rwanda Stock Exchange and the Nairobi Securities Exchange, recorded a 20.1% growth in interest income to 14.4 billion shillings on the back of a 21.4% year-on-year -year growth in the loan book to 8.9 billion shillings. Book value now above 300 uh, francs per share. That's our book value per share. Uh, market is still uh, moving quite slow uh, when you look at valuations. However, basic uh, earning per share going at above 33% uh, per year. We are sure that uh, in, the, in the days to come, we expect to see some good pricing uh, or response from the market because our earning per share has increased to 54.2 francs per share from 42.6 last year. Finally, UAP Old Mutual has embarked on an agreement with SME Support Center and Kenbright to underwrite a customized financial solution for SMEs. The cover provides life insurance, critical illness insurance, permanent disability, as well as a funeral cover and aims to reach more than 10,000 SMEs in three years. And with the help of uh, SME Support Center, how do we bring the insights from that segment and combine our risk management expertise with the insights that we're getting from that sector and start innovating or crafting solutions that actually resolve their, their real problems. And I think that's, that's really the significant point. Uh, they, they, we've, they reached out to us and they're working with the ecosystem, you know, the ecosystem that actually aggregates SMEs. Uh, the, uh, so it's re very interesting to see that they bring in uh, the players like ourselves on the board. So that open mind.
we wrap up with the forest markets and after that, spots with Karen Kibet. Kenya Defense Forces, KDF, announces the recruitment of General Service Officers, GSO Cadets, Specialist Officers, General Duty Recruits, Tradesmen and Women, and Constables, scheduled for the month of November 2021. Listen to Radio Taifa during the entire month of November 2021 for details of the recruitment process. Then grab your local newspaper, The Daily Nation, 7th of November. The Star on the 5th of November, while The Standard will have those details 14th of November and 9th of November on my gov inside this standard newspaper. The People's Daily on the 8th of November and 12th of November. Remember, no one can influence the recruitment process because bribery and other acts of corruption are against the law. Report any suspicious activities or characters to the nearest police station or military camp or call hotline numbers 0726419709 or 0120300599. KDF recruitment is absolutely free to all. What kind of music do you do? Um, I do Afro R&B, Afro R&B music. According to Jackie Maribe then, it is that um, Eric Omondi is a deadbeat dad. He hasn't been present in the kids' life. There was also um, Jamal and the wives, <laughs> as well as uh, Nganga, Lilian uh, with uh, Governor Mutua. I mean, any relationships, exes, he moezi, our taki mchezo. Another female artist lined up to perform was Nikita Kering. Miss Nikita's performance prepared the stage for Soul Generation Sainin Viri, the storyteller. The witness in me, hitmaker Etana, eventually stepped on stage and gave the revelers a beautiful performance. Chizuku, <laughs> Take it on at the right time. Honorable Musalia Mudavadi. The Honorable Mutahi Kagwe. Chief Justice Martha Karambukom. This is KBC. It's yes. the voice of Kenya. Asking the right questions. I don't know how it made you feel a speaker who is presiding over a house where members can be compromised with 10,000 children. We keep our guests comfortable. A mission to ensure our audience gets a complete story. For a few hours or so, I thought this is it. My end has come. If really we want an end of this pandemic, we must fight. Our goal, to tell it as it is for the benefit of our viewer. Uh, and I'm sure uh, we will have good discussions All right. uh, that will make probably your viewers mm. understand KDF better. Oh.
with 21 radio outlets. During a live interview on KBC TV, Chief of Defense Forces General Robert Kiboshi. Aji mkuu kwa mara ya kwanza katika maujiano yake ya kipeke na runinga ya KBC Channel 1. And two TV stations covering over 90% of the entire country. The message always gets home. KBC, the home of on-air TV interviews. Welcome back. Thank you for keeping it. KBC Channel 1. It's now time for us to take a look at what's making headlines in the world of sports. My name is Karen Kibet. Now on to our first story. Harambe Stars started their training on Monday in preparation for the World Cup qualifier match against Uganda and Rwanda. Kenya is already out of contention for a sport in the next round of the of the qualifiers having failed to win a match in their last four outings the team coached by engine firat has so far managed two draws and two losses in group e they will face uganda this thursday in kampala before hosting rwanda at nyaya national stadium on sunday The league and we have to see uh, how many players we have on some positions and now for example I give you some information Joseph Okumu get injured he cannot play in these matches uh, then Josh Onyango and Brian Mandela uh, they prefer to stay with their teams so therefore anyway three players were they out and I need of course also some experienced player next to them and I wanted to give uh, David and Musa also a chance to show themselves because they played many years in national teams, they experienced players and like I said we, uh, we need also a good balanced mix, we cannot play only with young players. And we do wish Harambe Stars all the best. Now moving on to matches athletics. Close to 200 athletes from Nairobi region turned up for the Athletics Kenya Athletes Seminar, which commenced today in Gong, Kajado County. The Federation will be holding a series of the seminar across the country in a bid to create awareness on the mental health among Kenyan athletes. In a bid to create awareness on mental health, doping and financial savings, Athletics Kenya has embarked on holding a series of seminars for athletes across the country. Social life, there's something, there's a missing link with the athletes. Because the missing link is this, you know, an athlete comes from nowhere, of course has been training, wins a uh, championship, gets a lot of money, but there's no education in between on how to handle themselves. We are ready to assist each other and also to assist us. The seminar which commenced today will see athletes from different counties deliberate on matters that affect athletes together with their coaches. Kuna wengine ambao ni juniors ambao wanakuja na kuambia fulani amenieleza hivi ama fulani katika ndoa yangu ni kuenda. So sometimes we try our best to advise them what next to do. Sometimes mtu anasakafika na sema nimelemewa na maisha. Wasikuve moyo. Mtu atrain na sidi kuomba Mungu na nyota yake itatimia. He advise our our athletes that sometimes when they get money they should think the family is the one who very important than that money and than the waweza kufanya kile wakati ikiwa ni kitu isikuwe ni ikiwe ni process isikuwe ni is an event of one day alafu inasahaulika wangu ni tuwe very grounded kwenye tuko upcoming tujue Mungu atatujalia siku moja tuwe wakimbiaji wakubwa na tupate hela na maisha mazuri Frederick Muki for Prime Edition and that sensitization is very much needed. Thank you, Moki, for that report. Moving on, Football Kenya Federation boss Nick Mwanda says his federation is committed in nurturing sports talent from grassroots in a bid to build talented footballers who can enhance the quality of the football in the country. Mwanda was speaking during the CAF B license coaching course that started today at the Kenya Institute of Special Education. He said the federation has so far trained over 4,000 coaches at the CAF D license level and over 600 coaches at the CAF C license level with the first group to take part in the CAF B license course set to graduate 
in December. Now, former Harambe Starlets head coach Jacqueline Juma said that training more coaches will help improve the level of football from grassroots in the country. A total of 25 football coaches from across the country are taking part in the course. My ambition is to get your knowledge and I was able uh, from where I was, I was able to Na pia eh, whatever knowledge niko nao nikiongezea na 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 kafbisa hii najua na impact na impact uh, uh, team yangu na at least naweza pia kusaidia uh, kuwaleta kuna chezo talents wako nazo na pia to produce uh, talent for national teams WRC Safari Rally Local Organizing Committee is working around the clock to ensure more Kenyan drivers compete in next year's event, which will be held in the country for a second year running. To achieve this, more young drivers have been enrolled in the FIA Star Program. According to the WRC Safari Rally CEO, Finas Kimathi, such initiatives will enable the young drivers gain skills to favorably compete against the world beaters. Kimadi exuded confidence of staging a better championship after learning from these year's challenges, among them solving the traffic snarl up and crowd control. The CEO called on many partners to come on board and support the government as preparations are already underway for next year's championship. An opportunity to learn from other countries and other sports that have completely commercialized sports. The government will be there to provide security. The government will be there to provide uh, the immigration services. They will be there to provide control during the event. And they will also be there to make sure that should we not raise enough money from the private sector, then they would come in and make sure that the event runs. Because again, the government is there for the people and the people of Kenya benefits when their economy benefits. The former rally driver is optimistic of the Kenyan championship being retained in the WRC calendar as it's the only unique rally series held across a national park which will attract more visitors and tourists in next year's event. We started the FI Rally Star program where we've picked talented young drivers who are under 26 who have shown real talent they've competed and they have the capacity to compete in international events kenya staged a successful event last year after the championship making a comeback following a 19 year miss frederick muki for prime edition and finally, West Ham United beat Liverpool 3-2 to end Liverpool's unbeaten run in the English Premier League this season. Jürgen Klopp was furious with the officials after several challenges went unpunished. The Hammers are now third in the league with 23 points and Liverpool fourth with a point behind. Meanwhile, in the Italian Serie A, AC Milan missed the chance to go. And that's all we had for you right here at the KBC Sports News. Let's do this all over again, same time, same place tomorrow. Do have yourself a peaceful night. But I do hand you back to Tom and Purity for more. Thank you, Maracuete Express. <laughs> Thank you so much for the sport update. And that sport update, of course, by Karen Kibet brings us to the end of Prime Edition this Monday night. We do again. This again tomorrow, same place, same time. And Purity Museo, Susan Thuku has been assigned language interpreter tonight. Good night and God bless. And I'm Tom Boy of Best Wishes. Bye bye.